Thank you, Senator Garcia. Senator Zaffarini, for what purpose do you rise, ma'am? Questions of Senator Haker. Senator Haker, will you yield? Absolutely. You sure that's the right folder? All of my questions are in this notebook, and this question includes only this notebook includes only questions for you, Senator. Yes, ma'am. So you can see I have a few. Not really. This is my notebook about this bill, however. And Senator Hager, you and I have discussed this bill at length. Yes, ma'am. On numerous occasions. Yes, ma'am. And I know that I've raised some of these questions before, but there are people who are concerned that certain sections of the bill have been changed, and that is why I'm going to ask some of these questions again. This is the identical bill to House Bill 2, correct? It has not been amended in no, any way. The, the bill that came over House Bill 2 is this bill, same as Senate Bill 1 that was introduced last a week ago Monday. And the difference between the Senate bill and the House bill is that this bill does not does include the reference to prohibiting an unborn child from being aborted after five months. The, this this bill Included. and Senate Bill One are identical. So the they bill that we the, the bill that we heard in Health and Human Services on Monday, Senate Bill One and, and House Bill Two are identical. My comparison was to the bill we heard last session. Oh yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. That yeah, they're they're difference. they're the they're the same Senate Senate Bill Five when it was laid out on, on the desk right. before I did a floor committee change, or Senate Bill 13, if you, you recall, that yes. was voted out of committee, as well as Senate Bill 5 that came back over. This is still the same bill with the exception of ledge council suggested just a couple of minor numbering changes. And you recall, Senator Hager, do you not, that I voted for Senate Bill 13 in committee? I, I, and that's the reason I referenced that. Yes, yes ma'am. But we had no opportunity to vote for that bill in the Senate as Senator Whitmire asked you earlier. That, that's correct. Thank that's you. correct. I did not file a separate standalone bill. Yes, Thank you. Is there anything in this bill that would make abortions less necessary, Senator? I think that this bill, I, I guess I would ask do you want to elaborate on your question? Is there anything here, for example, relative to sex education or to prenatal care that would make abortion less oh, necessary? Oh, yes, you, you and I, oh, that's right. I'm sorry, I re recall back to the conversation we had in Health and Human Services the other day. And I know we've had conversations on the floor even about whether sex education or increases in dollar appropriation amounts for health care, adoption, many several different issues that we have talked about in, in conjunction to this bill, but no, they are not part of this legislation, and I do not believe that they're on the call either to be part of this legislation. You would not consider such amendments germane to this bill? I would not. I did not in the last special session, but I did not call point of order on them for germaneness. I just simply asked not to vote on them or to table them. Thank you. Is there anything in this bill that seeks to reduce abortion by reducing unintended pregnancies? If you're talking about increasing in dollars appropriated for health care, this, this is not a funding bill, no ma'am. A supporter of House Bill 2 recently tweeted, and I'm quoting, Texas pays for the prenatal care and delivery for all low-income mothers. If that is true, and assuming it is, how can the fiscal note for this bill and for its companion Senate Bill 1 reflect no cost to the state? I, I have not seen that tweet. I'll show it to you. Thank you. Why does this bill use the term post-fertilization instead of the term last menstrual period to date the pregnancy? Because uh, that would, I believe, in all the literature I've read, that that's a much more accurate reflection of the age of that child because the post-fertilization is the time of conception versus the last menstrual cycle, last menstrual period is something that the lady, the individual, the woman would be saying is when her cycle last ended versus the conception. Thank you. Senator Hager, are you aware of any other Texas laws that dictate what type of medical protocol a doctor must prescribe to their patients or when the, that doctor should schedule a follow-up visit? Could you ask that one more time? I'm sorry. Are you aware of any other Texas laws, any other Texas laws other than this proposed law that dictate what type of medical protocol a doctor must prescribe to his or her patients or when that doctor must schedule a follow-up visit for a patient? I would believe that there probably is legislation, but I don't recall exactly what that is. But you believe that there is? I would, I would think that there probably is something out there somewhere, but I don't know exactly and I don't have it in front of me. 
If you learn of any, would you share that with me, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank and you. It, and if you do too, I'd ask that. Thank you. I'm not aware of any. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are you aware of any other Texas laws that dictate a particular protocol for what are called potentially dangerous drugs, such as those referenced in this bill? For I do example, not, I do not. I do not know of any other law that references RU486. Okay. Specifically, Senator, on the subject of fetal pain and scientific evidence. Mm -hmm. Why was there no invited or resource witness at the Senate Health and Human Services hearing that we held last Monday who was capable of discussing fetal pain precisely? Well, I was asked to try to come up with two witnesses that I thought were the best for both sides of the argument and me and my staff tried to provide the two witnesses for both sides as suggestions to the chair that were the most well-rounded to be able to discuss different aspects of this bill. And so we tried to pick those individuals on both sides that we thought were the most well-rounded rather than an expert in one particular field or another field. It just seems to me that one of the resource witnesses or invited witness certainly should have been able to address that point precisely. I appreciate that. I think that the fact was is, you know, knowing that we had so many people who wanted to testify and should be able to testify and trying to make sure we could get to the public rather than having, per se, 15 expert witnesses, but I'd have to ask the chair. So I just provided the number of people that I was asked to provide. I see. Now, there certainly was time to call a witness during that hearing. We were there so long. I, I recall that, too. And there were so many questions about fetal pain. Now, the bill that you filed last session included the reference to legislative findings regarding fetal pain. Mm -hmm. That term, legislative findings, is not included in this bill, correct? The term, if you're talking about here, the, the findings indicate, and that was something, if I recall, that when you voted for Senate Bill 13, that was an amendment that you had asked to change that the findings indicate rather than the legislative findings, and I've left that in this bill as incorporated in the discussions when you and I were working on. So there's Senate no bill reference 13. to the legislative findings. It's the, not the legislative. It does not. It does not have the title that the legislative findings, but it is the legislature that is passing this bill and working right. on this bill. So this is the legislature that is working on this piece of legislation. But it doesn't imply that the legislature conducted a study and found that. And well, I don't. I, I think what the legislature has done, both I believe here in the House and the Senate, is taken the testimony that is provided to us, taken the, the enormous amount of literature that has been provided to all of our offices, at least my office, and I would assume yours too, that was continuing to come in as I was walking here to this floor today. All of that literature plus the research that, that I have done, I firmly believe shows substantial medical evidence. And that is the question. And of course, the debate focuses on whether there is some evidence or substantial evidence, but certainly there is a controversy and certainly there is disagreement. And, and you have said you believe there is some, if I don't want to speak for you, Madam Chair, but I, if I recall correctly and you tell me otherwise, that you've said you've thought there's some medical evidence and I've continued to say I firmly believe in what I have read that there is a substantial Correct. amount of Correct. I believe that there is some medical evidence, not substantial medical and scientific evidence. And I, I do believe very strongly that there is a controversy. But you believe that that section of the bill is something that you would still stand by? I would, I would support the first part of Senate Bill 13, which was in reference to an unborn child after five months, or the term that you prefer is 20 weeks. I prefer the term which, five Which is months. based on substantial or some evidence. Yes. It, well, my amendment was to take out the word substantial. Correct, but that's or the, portion of the, that's the portion of the bill that you support. Correct. That, that's what I'm asking. Correct. On the subject of licensed abortion facilities and ambulatory surgical center regulation, Senator Hager. Yes, ma'am. Do you believe that decreasing access to licensed abortion facilities would decrease the number of abortions? I cannot say. I do not think I'm able to say here from year to year or month to month or week to week the number of abortions that would be sought here in the state of Texas. I we are adding a thousand people a day to this state. So I can't say whether that number goes up or down or a variety of circumstances, but I do think that this bill 
goes a long ways in doing two things. One, protecting unborn children up to the date of 20 weeks and then also increasing the standards of women's health care here in the state of Texas. Okay. Do you know how much it would cost for a licensed abortion facility to meet the requirements of an ambulatory surgical center? Some, some of the research that, that I have conducted and part of this also goes to the state of Pennsylvania, which here recently in the last several years has improved their clinics up to ASC standards. And in that state, there was a significant amount of arguments about closing down every facility, which did not happen. And also based on the question of whether September 1 is a reasonable date, and then also to what that cost would be. And that cost roughly from my research has been able to show that it's about $250,000 potentially on average. Thank you. At yesterday's hearing, we received a list of the strict requirements that are imposed on licensed abortion facilities and the additional requirements that they, the abortion facilities would have to meet under House Bill 2. These requirements were basically in two categories, if I recall correctly, and let me pull that list to refresh my memory. Do you remember that list, Senator Hager? The two column list that we received? I do, at I, do the I do recall that uh, one of the witnesses provided that document. Yes. And on the left, we have all the requirements that licensed abortion facilities meet today. And the same requirements are implemented for ambulatory surgical centers who then have additional requirements to meet. Those are in the categories of first, physical plant, and second, non-physical plant. And even yep. though I asked this question to witnesses, I did not get satisfactory answers, so I'll ask the question to you. Could you explain to me how physical plant requirements such as an increased hallway width or locker rooms for males or janitor closets improve the safety of women who have abortions? Yes, absolutely, Senator. I believe that having, if there is unfortunately complications, and as we've heard earlier and we heard in testimony that with medical abortions are 20% higher in incident rates, actually 700% higher in severe incident rates of major hemorrhaging and things unfortunately of that nature that having increased hall widths and one of the witnesses testified, I believe it was a lady that is a resident of Senator Birdwell's uh, a district in Waco who runs a facility would did a phenomenal job in her testimony and she mentioned about having the increased widths in the hallways was vital that if there was an incident, something of a traumatic incident that you needed to go to a better facility as a hospital, you can actually go down the hallway. Whereas today, some, of the, some facilities, not all, have a narrower hallway, you, you can't get that person down the hallway. I do believe that uh, separate having, uh, of a, you mentioned janitor closets, I, I do believe in having closets where you put products that people are not able to get to that are potentially dangerous, cleaning products, things like that. that that's an important to have it stored away, out of sight, out of mind of people. I do think that's important to have, yes. What about male locker rooms? Well, I, I think that we, in the members lounge, we have a separate <laughs> women's and men's restrooms. And I think it's probably equally important to have that in clinics as well. But do you have your own lockers in the male lounge? I don't, I don't actually bring gym clothes here or anything, but the point is we have different separate facilities. I'm delighted to tell you that the women senators do have individual lockers <laughs> with our names on them. Thank you. I appreciate you rubbing that in. We did fight, we did fight very, very hard for potty parity a few years ago. <laughs> yes, but we have our own lockers, and I know that you all do not.